Hey guys, we are back with another trip recap. Uh, we have a nice big bluefin coming over the rail here. Uh, it was a pretty epic night fight on this trip. Yeah, you can see uh, the anglers that were on this trip were lucky enough to get into some fantastic fishing on really nice grade bluefin, 100 plus pound fish. And it looks like that guy's using a little bit of a lighter line there, and you can see a few other of the fish on deck. Yeah, uh, if I remember this stop correctly, it started out with that small one first, and the big one started to bite. Um, and uh, it turned into like nothing but 80 to 140 pound fish. And I've never seen this kind of reel. Is this an electric reel here? Yeah, this is a Daiwa electric reel um, that he's using in the backpack he has, has his battery um, to assist him with the, uh, to assist with jigging and all that good stuff. Um, while fighting the fish, he did try to use it in that uh, electric mode for a second and it just wasn't working, so he had to use it regular rod and reel style. So are there different speeds to bring the jig up, like when you're yeah, you kind of jigging at night? You know, I've actually never used one of these. Um, it was kind of cool to see okay, right him there, dropping and just pushing a button to wind. And the other cool feature about it is it has a uh, line counter to uh, help you know exactly how deep you are. And the extra cool part about this was this was actually his birthday. so. Happy 67th and way to go on that fish. He's doing a great job of um, fighting this fish right here, and it looks like it's sort of going back to the CERN. Um, Matt's just trying to do a good job of keeping it out from underneath the boat. Um, but a little shorter rod as well, which, like we talked about before, can put some stress on your back versus on the fish uh, when you have to lift. But it looks like everything's under control and it's able to come back out from under the boat. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's no shame in handing it to a deckhand or a captain when your fish is getting under the boat um, because you got to get that rod tip super low to the boat and you have to lift him out and you have to time it right on a circle uh, to keep him away from the boat, especially when you're near the stern because the props and the, uh, the rudder there can cause disaster for your big fish. And it looks like he had a line wrapped on him as well. So can you kind of describe the feeling of, you know, like it's hard to describe, right? When you know that you're kind of on a fish, right? But it's hard for people to kind of, I think, understand or really know what that is like. Uh, I, if I it's think, never yeah, happened. it tricks a lot of people when they get wrapped on a fish because all of a sudden the line stops or they feel a jump in their line and they think they've hooked their own fish and uh, they'll start to wind and try to set the hook. And uh, you got to be careful with that because you can pop off someone's fish, right? And what I tell a lot of first time people is when you hook a fish, it's going to take a big run generally right away. So if you think you hooked one and it's just coming up, you probably snagged someone else's line and your line's coming up with theirs. Right. Some, a rule of thumb that I usually tell people, especially like on fly line, right, when you're learning if, whether you have a hot bait or, you know, an actual fish, whether it's a bass or yellowtail or whatever it is, if you can stop it with your thumb, right, just applying pressure with your thumb, it's not a fish <laughs> because the fish is going to overpower that and uh, start taking all that line out. And so it's kind of, you can kind of feel like, um, you know, something's just not quite right, you know, and I know that you sometimes want it to be a fish or thinking it might be a fish, but when in doubt, just uh, kind of keep your thumb on the spool, feel if there's any extra tug kind of coming back at you at a consistent basis, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. Um, you see another nice fish coming up to color here and uh, stuck right in the head. Not so happy about it. Um, these fish, when you when you hook into one too, you'll feel it during the fight if someone's pulling sideways on you a lot of times. And like we tell our anglers all the time, stay calm. Let us know someone's on you. We'll try to figure it out who it is. And as long as they don't pull, uh, we can figure it out nine out of ten times and save the fish and save all their line and their lure as well. You can see Matt kind of assisting the angler here with pulling that line in. So what's kind of the reasoning behind uh, that sort of motion? It's just a little bit of extra drag there to help the, the reel put the line on the spool. Um, for those of you that watch Wicked Tuna, um, it's kind of what they do with their heavy line. Their left hand's out in front and they're pulling as they're winding in second gear to gain as much line as possible. Um, it isn't something you want to do throughout the fight. That fish was pretty tired. It was towards the end of a longer fight. So when the fish is a little bit more cooperative, it's just kind of keeping its head up. Uh, so he's circling up towards the boat while he's pinwheeling to get to the gaff quicker. And you can see this uh, younger kid here. I think it's uh, handed off a fish by Alex. It looks like Alex's rod there. So he's uh, hanging on for dear life, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alex hooked this one on his uh, acid wrap rod here for one of his... Uh, 
I think it was a West Coast Jiggers lure that he hooked it on, and he was able to hand it to him. Um, I'm not sure if he'd ever caught a bluefin before, but I'm, I'm pretty darn sure this is the biggest one he's ever fought. And you can see he's struggling a little bit with uh, keeping the fish in front of him. Um, and Keegan's trying to show him how to use the rail effectively for a rail rod. Yep, the biggest thing is that I see some anglers even put the rod on the rail just above where it's wrapped. Um, you know, that's something that can, you know, especially when you get up to the bow or, you know, you just really get kind of lost in the fight. You really just want to make sure you're protecting your rod and putting it um, on that sort of rubbery part because that's exactly what it's made for. Yeah, that wrap up there is where it's supposed to be on the rail. It's hard for some guys for sure, um, especially your first time fighting a fish. Everything oh, yeah. feels kind of awkward and everything's happening really fast and you feel overwhelmed. That's why you just got to kind of take a breath and listen to the deckhands because they're going to try to coach you and tell you the best uh, form to help you fight the fish. And uh, you can see it worked out and he was able to put it on the boat. Yeah, nice first bluefin. <laughs> That's pretty epic. Yeah, um, there was a lot of really nice fish caught here. Um, you can see Chad, very good angler, pulling hard on his fish here at the end. Um, kind of keeping the circles in. Josh is telling him to keep the rod straight out to shorten up the circles. Um, and another fish coming up and over. This is that, that lighter line that we saw earlier in the video. He's only using 40 pound tests. Uh, so almost every other fish is in. His is not. He uh, did not speak up and let us know. We would have loved to have put him on 80 pound test at least instead of fishing 40 there. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when that happens, right, it's like you, you can get bit, but you know, it, during the nighttime, it really doesn't matter. Um, you know, it, they're not line shy at all. No, I've never seen a difference at night when you're jigging at 300, 400 feet like we were on this night of line size. There, there's no shyness about it. Um, guys using a 130 pound test to a 200 pound leader are getting bit just as well as you on your 40 pound test. Um, you don't want to use 40 pound tests then. You never want to get caught at night with light line. That's just a rule of thumb for anglers. Um, use the heaviest you have. When you're on our boat, if you don't have something heavy, speak up because we have a few uh, rods and reels that we bought out of our own pockets that we love to supply anglers with to help them catch a big fish uh, at night if we get an opportunity like this. And here's another one coming over the rail and it looks like you know, all of these are um, hooked really well, right? There's, it's good in the corner. There isn't that extra assist hooks. I feel like since our one of the videos that we talked about that in, um, you know, there's been a trend we'd see, we've seen anyway on the boat of just using uh, hooks on one end of the knife jig, and I feel like that's really helped with avoiding kind of those side snagged fish. Yeah, it helps people get fish in a lot quicker. Um, this is that fish on 40 pound test that did take a while, last fish of the stop, but. It's finally coming up and over the rail and he is completely stoked to get that thing in. And you can see another angler here. Uh, he's working hard, putting his body into it and Matt's sort of helping out. Looks like it's close to gaff and we also have another line wrapped around. That'll happen a lot of times at the end of the fight. The fish does a big circle and it'll pick up a line. So when you're dropping in, you kind of got to pay attention. If a fish is getting close, you may not want to drop in right next to a fish that's at color. Uh, doing big circles, but you can see the deckhands were there with him. They instructed him, you know, don't pull, don't let the line get tight, and just let us get this fish in real quick. And once we get the fish in, uh, we'll get you guys untangled. Right, and you know, the goal is to never cut braid right or cut line. We want to try to avoid that as much as like humanly possible. Sometimes it's just a complete bird's nest that uh, I don't think would ever get untangled, you know. And so sometimes it comes to that, those drastic measures but for the most part I mean crew's able to you know get everything untangled we just it, it requires patience yeah for sure we try to save braid and lures as much as possible for guys we know how much it costs and it's a bummer the only time we're really cutting is if multiple fish are stitched together by a line or something like that and we just we can't get it out and they're about to Good saw morning. each other off we hate to do it but it's done sometimes you can see right here this angler uh another acid wrap rod here it looks like this might be another one of alex's sticks he might have hooked and handed another one on this trip i think he was uh, pretty on fire if i remember correctly nice yeah he's uh he's good at that slow pitch jigging that um i'm i'm not too familiar with myself he, he definitely puts in the time at the rail um you can see this fish doing its big spins going under the boat he keeps the the rod tip low down by the water until it gets out gets a good lift and uh they're able to stick the fish and drag it in to get the second and third shot there um 
and lift that fish up and over the rail. And uh, here's another guy here, just right midship about, doing a good job trying to put the tip of the rod down, um, getting it close to the water. Again, it just, it really reduces the number of things that can go wrong. Yeah, you're just really increasing your angle when you get that tip low, so that your line's not rubbing on the hole, or like in the stern, the props and the rudders, which are going to, you know, lose a lot of fish if you don't pay attention and get that tip down in the water. And this guy just did an awesome job. It was kind of straight out, almost like you were, you know, in one line from the fish to the angler. And he did an awesome job of backing up and putting it on the rail and getting a bend in that rod. I can't emphasize enough how important that is. And it can be tip really down, difficult to with a shorter rod like this, but he just does an awesome job of knowing his setup and uh, figuring out how to put some tension on the fish. Yeah, you can see he's just, he's listening really well to the instruction that Matt's giving him here. Matt's trying to guide him to where the fish is circling at in case he can't see it under the hole, uh, when to lift, when to pull. And uh, Paul, the angler on the rod here, is doing a great job and uh, is able to get the fish up for an easy stick for Matt. And uh, once he gets the first gaff in it, it's under control to throw the second one in the head and uh, lift that one up and over the rail and welcome it aboard. Yeah, you could see how just that first gaff by flipping that fish over, right, with its belly up, um, it really just kind of stopped it in its tracks. Yeah, if, I, uh, if I'm ever gaffing a fish and say all the other deckhands are busy gaffing another fish or helping really? anglers, wow. um, that's what I'll do a lot of times is try to hit that bluefin in the belly because it'll flip it upside down. And for some reason, they kind of go calm when that happens a lot of time. And you're able to get the tail out of the water for a second. Uh, once the motor's out of the water, you can kind of hold it for a second while you wait for that second gap to come over. You can see this angler here. The fish is nice and up and down and, um, you know, just trying his best to keep the rod tip out. It would be really helpful if he put the rod a little bit lower to the water, like we mentioned, just getting working that angle. But he's doing a great job of continuing to wind, and that's super important. You can see that, that leader, that knot coming up right now. Yeah, big, strong guy here on the rod. Um, my only difference if I were fighting this fish is I would have that rod butt underneath my left armpit um, just to give me a little bit more freedom of movement if the fish went under the boat. But he does have it in a very good controlled spiral coming up. And he's up by the flare of the boat, up by the bow here, um, where it's pretty much the safest spot on the boat. The boat flares out. There's no proper rudder to worry about, and you get a bigger circle of the fish. Um, you can see that one lit up pretty hot after it got gaffed and uh, jumped around until that second gaff got on it. Yep, and I'd say, you know, the most important thing, right, is just uh, angle in the rod and to keep winding. Everything else, the deck hands will kind of remind you and take care of, you know, and they'll, they should be there the whole time um, if they can be, right? But those are the two biggest, I think, takeaways. Yeah, keep on winding, keep a bend in that rod, uh, follow your fish, um, and then listen for the assistance. There's a lot of guys that get fish blinders on once they have a big fish on so and here's the last fish here uh the video coming over it looks like it was an awesome trip